Hello and welcome. My name is Grace. We're just going to I'm just going to say Grace now because the whole hello, my name is Mary Grace Barron, also known as Rue of Rue's Kitchen is quite lengthy. It's quite a mouthful. But hello. Grace, Rue, doesn't matter. I'm here and today in this video, I am going to attempt uh, my second VR ever. This one is uh, this one was devised by Simon from the Hermit's Cave another channel I absolutely adore. I found it, I think I found Simon's The Hermit's Cave the first time I ever searched edging a tarot deck. And that was at least a year and a half ago. Anyway, I will have, I will link to his video below of uh, his top five faves. My previous video was my top five I decks I cannot live without. This one's different. Um, this one is my top five faves of different divinatory tools. And um, it's my current fave. I, I set the parameter for myself. This is my current faves, not my faves of all time. Although one of them might be two of them. Okay, whatever. You know what I'm saying. It's different than the other one was more nostalgia, sentimental value. My top five decks I cannot live without. This one is specifically my top five faves having to do with different divination tools. So we start with oracles. I have been loving this oracle since I picked it up last summer. I was drawn to it because of my love of everything vintage. And it has become quite a staple in my arsenal when it comes to professional reading. Not just for myself. This, this always comes out I felt when I'm reading for other people. And it is Victoria Mosley's Vintage Wisdom Oracle. Look at this box. Holy cow. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. This, the cards original, when I, for a, over a year I used them, <clears throat> excuse me, in their original form with the borders around them. I had edged it. I had edged the deck to match. Each card had, I decked, I edged the deck. Oh my goodness. I edged each card individually with a marker to match the color of the border because the because the borders were all slightly varied which is beautiful but then i thought hmm, i wonder how these would look trimmed they're you know they're readily available i could always replace them if i don't like it or if i mess it up and i absolutely love it so let's start with the backs the backs this is how they look with the borders trimmed. I love the face on the back of these cards. See, these, these are called Vintage Wisdom Oracle. And that face brings to mind, for me, what Cher looked like in the 70s when I was little. This is what Cher, this face reminds me of, uh, of Cher when she was on the Sonny and Cher show in the early 70s. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Love it. All right, so that's the backs. I'm getting all excited about the backs. This is what they look like trimmed. Absolutely, I, I absolutely love them. What do I love about this deck? Well, one, look at this. It's old photographs. It's fo I don't typically enjoy photograph, you know, photo manipulation. I don't. Collage, it's not my thing. But this deck is so cohesive. And the artist has done such a beautiful job of putting these images together. It's that's why it's one of my top fives. It is my it is my you know in my top fives. And currently, it ha for the last year and a half has been. I think it's year and a half or one year has been my favorite oracle deck. The keywords are really thought out. So you know. I've had Oracle decks, which frankly, I love the art, but the keywords were like, meh, you know? I've had decks where the keywords were really well thought out and the art was meh. This, this is the complete package. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love that when I trim them, they just look like a stack of old photographs. After I trim them, I re-edged because I had, you know, I cut off the trim, the borders. I re-edged with, I think it's a combination of a Copic marker, what was left of that Copic marker, 
I can't remember the color, but it was similar to Antique Linen by Distress Inks. So yeah, favorite Oracle deck. <clears throat> Gives really good insight. I rarely need to use the I rarely need to use the guidebook. It comes with a really cute guidebook with some really good stuff in here. But these keywords are just so apropos and they and so open ended that you really don't need it. Beautiful, 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 favorite, favorite, favorite. I saw one uh, Becca Night Owl. I I love her. I will I guess I'll I'll put the link below because if you don't know, if you haven't watched her before, if you're coming to my channel because you know me and you haven't really ventured out into the world of tarot videos, I'm sorry, I am going to you're going down a rabbit hole. I love Becca. And um she had mentioned this this deck in one of her recent videos and I agree with her it doesn't get a lot of talk like I haven't seen it much in videos and it is again top five and my number one oracle deck for one for last year the next item on the top five list that um, Simon devised is your your top your your favorite Lenormand deck let me Let's take a moment and have, let's have a little Lenormand moment, just you and me. I can't read Lenormand. They creep me out. I don't know if it was when I first picked up a deck of Lenormand. Uh, it, was, it was Titania Hardy's fortune cards in the gold box. It's actually coming, a new edition is already available in the UK and I think in Australia already. It's going to come to North America in the fall, which is a 90s style, Le Normand with like, you know, weird photographs of the images, um, high contrast, kind of looking like a photo negative, if you're old enough to remember what photo negatives look like. Anyway, Le Normand creeps me out and I don't know if it was because I, I, I first picked up Le Norma when I had a lot of creepy stuff going on around me if you know I was dealing with a lot of um, disingenuous people dishonest people all I kept getting was snake whip snake whip you, you get the picture if you read Le Norma so as much as I appreciate the history of Mademoiselle Le Norma and her cards and all that jazz and as much as are these beautiful Lenormand decks that I see either I like Pixie's Astounding Lenormand like if I had to pick one I would probably pick up I would probably purchase Pixie's Astounding Lenormand that which is available widely available mass produced by US Games but I can't no 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 they creep me out they're too direct and they're they're negative. I don't know. Not negative, but well, you know, it's like they're not they're not all they're not all sunshine and cupcakes, but the the message is direct and sometimes quite harsh. <laughs> so depending on like yeah, no. Sorry. They creep me out. However, ironically, what I've replaced my Le Normand um item there with something else that I use, Don Michelle from Boho Tarot. I will look to her below. Love her. Love her channel. She is so talented. She brought up bibliomancy, and I actually do practice quite a bit of bibliomancy. It's something that uh, I learned from my dad. My dad my dad passed away, went into spirit, transitioned um, in April of 2000. And I still have his copy of a little light reading uh, as... Um, so someone has some people have described of la divina la Di, divina seriously grace of la divina commedia the divine comedy by dante alighieri so my dad the, my dad used to take this with him everywhere this was his bible this was his tarot deck this was everything and uh, bibliomancy is where you you hold a deck hold the deck Hold the book, think upon your intention, your question, whatever, and then you just ran, open you open it in a random spot, and whatever you read, wherever your eyes your eyes land first, 
is your message. My uh, Zia, my aunt, my my father's sister, used her Bible, her her Italian Bible, in the, in the same manner, and my dad used La Divina Commedia, and means a lot, sentimental. Um, probably could have landed in the previous video of something I would never get rid of. I can't live without. La Divina Commedia for Bibliomancy. And yes, ironically enough, this doesn't creep me out. All right. The next item on Simon's list was your favorite playing cards. Now, the first deck of cards I ever learned how to read, I was six years old, were the Neapolitan playing cards. And since it's my top five I had to pick, I didn't choose those because Around the age of 12, I then learned how to read regular playing cards. Look at these. Now, I love these. I don't read playing cards as frequently as I used to. It used to be the parlor trick. It was, I went to a party somewhere, I went to get together with friends, pulled out the playing cards, and give a reading. Like, these were what I read with more often than tarot at the start. Like from the age of about 12 to 16, 18, even till the age of 20, when someone asked me for a reading, they were asking for the playing cards. The difference between a tarot reading and a playing card reading is playing card readings really address the mundane. The mundane, the day-to-day, -day, the life on earth concerns um, very much like Le Normand. So again, ironically, Le Normand creeps me out. These don't. These have a little bit of a greenish tinge to them. I don't know if you can see, like they're not exactly white. They're like greenish white. And I read these for, I, I still do occasionally read them when I'm looking for a more mundane kind of reading. And I just love these and I'll show you why. One, they're vintage. How vintage are they? Or what do you mean by vintage, Grace? Like, what do you mean? Well, first of all, look at the gilding. These things, this deck is like seven, not 70 years old. Oh my God, sorry. Is at least 40 years old. At, at the very least. Look at the gold gilding on it. Look how it's held up. And look at the backs. Need I say more? <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Again, if you've spent any time at all on this channel or on my social media or you know me in person, me, vintage, the 1970s, love it. I love pairing, uh, I love pairing this deck with um, my Hoi Polloi Tarot, which uh, surprisingly is not in this top five because this is my top five of each divinatory tool um, that I actually currently use. So I don't read with these as often, but if someone asks me for a mundane reason, I do pull these out. Uh, not a mundane reason. For a reading with a mundane focus, job, um, it's usually job, career, uh, schooling, um, relationship, this is for this is when someone wants a divinatory reading and I do read uh, I do well we'll talk about it. anyway when I get to the next thing so this is for a divinatory reading this is for um, what's going to happen with my job what's going to ha what's you know what's going to happen with my relationship with this person what's this person's intention uh, as a business partner it's these cards playing cards love them Next is tarot deck and top top five. So first of all, this is my top five of uh, items that house my deck, my cards. I love this box. It's perfect. It's made in Poland. It's perfectly tarot deck size. It's standard tarot deck size for my favorite tarot deck my one of my, my top of my top fives my favorite tarot deck top five fave 
Um, got it last year. It already has over a hundred readings under its belt. The commemorative centennial that you've probably seen already many, many times. But here it is. I love the cardstock. It's U.S. Games. I love the cardstock. I love the coloration. I love the way it shuffles. I shuffle the heck out of my cards. Both, you know, um, the regular way, which actually I have like three ways I shuffle. So we're here, might as well. So there's this way, which this is actually quite relaxing sometimes. You just, I just sit there and shuffle. It's calming. The original way that this is another way that I shuffle. I don't know if you could see. Ah. Can you see? Right. This top, bottom, top, bottom. I've been, especially with larger cards, little hands. And then, of course, the riffle shuffle. There. You get the sound effect. There we go. Beautiful. Love these. It's a fave. It deserves its place in my top five. Like I said, it has at least, I lost count after 100. I only, count, I only keep count up to 100 readings for a deck. And then after, like, uh, individual readings for individual people. Until, so once I get to 100 readings, no, not, not 100 individual, 100 readings, and you know what I'm saying. This has at least 100 readings under its belt. When I got it, it was stark white. It had stark white edges. I think it's the second deck I ever edged. And I did it with a Copic marker, which is similar in color to, I can't remember the name. I don't know if it's beige brick or something like that, but it was a beige Copic marker that just matches the, uh, the coloration of the cards. And lastly, the wild card. Uh, it's not a different it's not a divination tool oh and i do i do predict the oh so yeah the question the, the question the thing i was thinking about these are great for predictive readings but try as i might not to i get predictive readings from tarot cards as well it's just it's just the way it is i can't when when people describe that they don't do predictive readings i don't know how not to do that because i just read what the cards say so there's my, stan my stance. There's my thoughts on predictive readings. To me, they happen anyway, whether I want them or not. So, And now for the wild card. This guy. Look at... Look, let's bring him really close. I hope it focuses. Uh, can you see? Uh, look at that. This... This stone is called Storolite, if you're not familiar. It's spelled S-T-A-U-R-O-L-I-T-E, also known as fairy stone. It comes this way naturally in nature. And it's a beautiful stone. One, look at this, this is a fine specimen. I will uh, link to the Facebook page below. I got this beautiful specimen, not on eBay, not on Etsy, no, I got mine from a very um, excellent, reputable, um, what's the word? Oh my God, what do you, the word escapes me. They know where they get their crystals from. It's not, you know, they're not raping, they're not raping the earth for, you know, their crystals. They know where their crystals come from. And the store is New Moon Books. They are located in Pompano Beach, Florida. And I live at the complete opposite end of the continent, diagonally. I'm in the Pacific Northwest. But they're wonderful. Uh, they don't have a, web, a, store, like a website for their store. They do have a website for their store. But they don't have where you can shop on their website. However, if there's something you're looking for, they, you know, my experience has been when I asked them, they were able to obtain it for me. And that's who I got this from. So I'll be linking to their Facebook page below. 
This is Storolite Fairy Stone. This is, I use this a lot in um, protection work. I use it a lot for hex breaking. Um, it's just, yeah, it, it kind of, it's in the same, same family of, uh, same family of function of, you know, in, in the same toolbox that you would keep your tourmaline and obsidian, onyx, all those protection stones. And there's more than that, but you know, those are, those are, I like the black stones, so that's what came to mind. So that's it for me. It's my, that was my top five faves VR to Simon at the Hermit's Cave. I really enjoy watching everyone else's videos. So I, so this one actually, I am going to put the hashtag on the, on the bottom of my video and you'll be able to just click the hashtag hopefully and it'll bring up everyone else's. If it doesn't, just, you know, pop it into the search box, top five faves, Hermit's Cave and have fun because I really am enjoying everyone else's videos. Thank you and have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.